Stephen Palmer gives a wonderful summary of the topics that I presented so far in his book, Vision Science. The book also provides a nice definition of working definition for visual perception. It says that visual perception is the process of acquiring knowledge about environmental objects and events by extracting information from the light they emit or reflect. This is a good definition since it addresses many facts about visual perception. One of them is that uh, it is about knowledge acquisition. Remember concepts and categories from the previous lecture. The definition also says that visual perception is about environmental objects, so it is about the external world. Information extraction addresses information processing, which is a theoretical framework for the study of visual perception, as you will learn in incoming lectures. Finally, of course, it is about light, as I introduced in the previous lectures. Scientists and philosophers were interested in visual cognition since the ancient times. We find multiple theories of visual perception in ancient Greek schools. One of them is called the emission theory, proposed by the philosophers of ancient Greek like Euclid and Plato. According to the emission theory, vision occurs when light rays emanate from the eyes and they intercept with the objects in the environment. An opponent theory was the intromission theory, supported by Aristotle and Epicurus. According to this theory, vision comes from something that enters the eyes. This thing was the representative of the object. Our knowledge of the eyes also goes back to ancient times. For example, al Hasan, maybe pronounced Ibn Hasan, described the functional anatomy of the eye as an optical system in the 11th century. He was aware that the eye was like a pinhole camera. Another historically important figure was known as Johannitus in the European countries. His original name was Hunayn ibn Isaac. Uh, he lived in the 10th century. He provided diagrams of the eye with the central lens. Kepler was the scientist who proposed the modern theory of physiological optics. Today, our picture of visual perception is based on three major pillars. The light photons that enter into the eye the retinal image which is basically the pattern of activity on a set of receptors in the back part of the eye and the third is the brain during the past two centuries several theoretical frameworks have been proposed for the study of visual cognition all these theoretical frameworks answer a simple question which was proposed by kofka so the question was why do things look as they do some of these frameworks focus on the organism instead of the environment. Some of them are empiricist rather than being nativist. Some of them conceive visual perception as a holistic event rather than investigating it in terms of its components. So very briefly, if you think that things look as they do because the world is the way it is, then you emphasize the external world, external stimulus conditions. However, if you say that things look as they do because our visual nervous system is the way it is, then you emphasize the organism itself. You may assume that it is possible to study visual perception by investigating the pieces to understand the whole. Then you have an atomistic perspective. However, if you think that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, so we should focus on the organization of the whole visual field, then you have a holistic perspective. All those aspects that characterize the frameworks of visual cognition can be used for describing specific theoretical perspectives. One of them is called structuralism. The basic idea was that perception consisted of basic sensory atoms in a similar way that matter is composed of atomic elements. 
Each sensory atom was believed to represent simple sensations, such as redness, yellowness, and so on. They also formed perceptual complexes in a similar way that primitive atoms form complex molecules. Having a closer look at the assumptions behind the structuralist framework shows that it is more empiricist than being nativist. It is also not holistic and it focused on the organism rather than the environment. The weakest side in this framework was its methodology. Researchers such as Wilhelm Wundt and Edward Teichner believed that these elementary units of perception can be discovered by careful observation of one's own experiences. This is called introspection. The challenge with introspection as a methodology was that it was difficult to find an agreement among research labs. This method led to different results in different research labs. The methodology was then replaced by the behaviorist methods in the 19th century. The structuralist framework employed the atomistic framework, atomistic understanding of the world, which was quite popular in physics of the 19th century. In visual cognition research, it is interesting to see the similarities between theoretical frameworks and scientific developments at the time of their establishment. In the next lecture, I will introduce reactions against structuralism, which include the Gestalt framework for visual cognition and ecological optics.